It's no exaggeration to say that Burgundy produces some of the most expensive and indeed rarest wines in the world, but what makes this land so special? With 84 total appellations and hundreds of different vineyards, it's sometimes difficult to know exactly where to find the best wines. Fascinatingly, the region's large number of appellations and the patchwork of vineyards are due to Napoleonic laws of inheritance. Prior to Napoleon, there were the laws of primogeniture, where the eldest son received everything. Well, now under Napoleon, he says that everyone, all the children must be treated equally. So all of a sudden, you have this family, for example, that owns 1 14th of the Clos and they have three children. Well, guess what? Their 1 14th of the Clos is divided by three when the parents die. And, but those people have children. And so that gets divided. And that gets divided. So today you have cases where someone will own a vine, or three vines, or half a row. And they can be a pharmacist in Paris. They can have a bookstore in Amiens. They get a check from the family winery uh, every year. It's not only a patchwork of vineyards, but it's a patchwork of, of ownership. Whilst the ownership of land in Burgundy is often complicated and different appellations and vineyards can be confusing, the quality ranking system of any wine within the region is fixed. Burgundy is divided into a hierarchy. The French love hierarchies. And it, to understand uh, the hierarchy of Burgundy, you kind of have to imagine a pyramid. And the bottom 80% of the pyramid is what they call the regional wines. Then you have 12%, which are considered to be uh, village wines. So the label will say uh, Beaune or Chablis. Then you have the premier crus, the first growths. And that makes up 7%. The very, very top of your pyramid you have 1%, and you have the tiny tip of the pyramid, and those are the Grand Cru. And the Grand Crus don't carry the name of their village. They only carry the name of the vineyard. So the, the, the bottle will say Le Montrachet, or it'll say Clos And those are the, the very tip of the pyramid. Those are the, the great growths of, of Burgundy. When it comes to quality, there are just four classifications to remember. The hierarchy begins with the regional wines, often referred to as Bourgogne, Rouge or Blanc. Wines at this level usually come from the region's unclassified vineyards. Next is what's known as village wines. You'll find the name of the village from where the wine comes, such as Volnay or Pomar, on the label. These wines can deliver some excellent value for money, particularly as the most prestigious producers will occasionally down-classify their wines from premier cru to village if they are not 100% satisfied with the quality that year. This means that sometimes a wine will say village on the label, but the liquid inside the bottle will be from a higher classification. Stepping up a gear, we have the premier and grand cru of Burgundy, which are made from the best vineyards in the region. Premier Cru wines are from these superior vineyards and will always state Premier Cru on the bottle, but can fall into two categories, either generic or specific. Generic Premier Cru wines only state the general appellation on the label and are usually from a blend of different Premier Cru vineyards within an appellation. For example, Bone Premier Cru or Mercury Premier Cru. Specific Premier Cru wines, on the other hand, come from a single Premier Cru vineyard and will state both the appellation and vineyard on their label. Great examples are Savigny Les Bones Premier Cru Les Serpentières and also Chablis Premier Cru Vaillon. Finally, the top 1% and creme de la creme of the Burgundy Pyramid are the Grand Cru wines, with only 33 vineyards boasting this ranking across the whole Burgundy region. At this level, wines will always be from a single vineyard and may even come from just a few rows of vines within that vineyard. Some of the most notable Grand Crus in Burgundy are Chevalier Montrachet, Romani Conti, and Clos de Vaujour. But it's not just the location and ranking system of Burgundy wines that determines their quality, as the year or vintage in which a wine is produced also matters. The winemaker will have a large influence on quality, although not all winemaking philosophies are the same. So how would you describe your winemaking philosophy? After many, many years of uh, being a professional lush, um, the, the lesson learned is that um, there shouldn't be any winemaking. 
um, you should put yourself in a position where the wine makes itself. And that means that your work is done in the vineyard. And at Romoisne, that's what we try to do. We try to have the vineyards be farmed in such a way that we ripen, that we ripen fully, that we harvest when the fruit tastes good, and then we take those grapes, we sort them, we have three sorting tables with 10 sorters on each table, and we go cluster by cluster, berry by berry, to only keep the very best. We then destem 100%, and then we get out of the way. That's what we try to do. Although Burgundy's quality pyramid is a great way to get a good idea of the prestige of a wine, it's important to know your producers as well to find the best wines possible, no matter what the ranking. 